Hi, everyone. This is Brent. Welcome to the LoveWorks Dreamers and Doers podcast number 108. At LoveWorks, we believe you are never too young to be a dreamer and never too old to do your dream. If this is your first time, thank you for joining us and giving us the thing that means the most to you, your time. If you're returning, welcome back. We know you have lots of options out there in the podcast universe. That's right. And our hope at the Dreamers and Doers podcast is that each week our special guest is going to connect with you wherever you find yourself today, and they're going to inspire you to become the best version of yourself for tomorrow. Now, at LoveWorks, we believe that one of the ways that you can become one of the best versions of yourself is to focus on personal growth. We love curating resources like ones that can influence your mindset, book suggestions, new music to check out, organizations making a positive contribution in the world, movies that will inspire you, influencers, blogs, or resources that have encouraged our personal growth. Today, we are going to give you a life hack, gamify things that don't necessarily sound fun. Make them fun for <laughs> gamification. Tell us about this, Carolyn. Yes. So this is uh, this can be helpful in kind of doing tasks that maybe we don't necessarily love, right? And so um, this originated back from my college days, Brent, when I needed to, to study a little bit more. And there was a lot of reading to do. And it was not like you're kind of fun, like, oh, man, I'm going to go read the Harry Potter series type, type of reading. Uh, but they were textbooks. And so uh, something that I did was I used to go and buy like a big bulk bag of gummy bears um kind of one of yeah from one of those like candy stores and i would basically assign a gummy bear to each paragraph depending on the book that i was reading the textbook and the paragraph size um, but there could be maybe like five let's say five paragraphs to a page or five gummy bears to a, to a page and so that was one way that i kept uh, motivating myself to earn gummy bears and get some studying done was just to basically earn them um, with each paragraph that i read so that's a that's a little life hack in a way where you get to treat yourself but you know do something that you don't necessarily love but you need to do oh absolutely you know that reminds me carolyn of a quote that i I try to live by actually, um, it is from Mary Poppins. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. You find the fun and snap the jobs again. Now, I know that was a, a great movie when I was a kid, but I find myself returning to that idea all the time. In fact, like in industry today, gamification is huge in trying to help people deal with things. You know, if they could just gamify my taxes somehow, that would <laughs> I mean, I would love it if like H&R Block came out with the Space Invaders to do your taxes or something. But but quite honestly, I mean, it is it is truly a, a, a powerful thing to be able to take stuff that you don't like to do. And just like you said, with the Gummy Bears, figure out how to make it fun uh, by adding an element of competition or something interesting to it that normally isn't part of it. But you're giving yourself points. And it could be as simple as that. I've actually done things before where I give myself points for accomplishing things I don't want to do, like certain things on my <laughs> to-do list are worth more points than others because some of the things I just hate. And so it's like, those are 50 points, you know, and the, and the easy stuff that I enjoy doing, well, those are just like one or two points, you know, and, and somehow that will help me motivate through getting that stuff done. I've turned it into a high score game. So yeah, uh, definitely lots of things like that. I think that it's, it's by no coincidence that we're talking about gamification today because uh, <laughs> we have a really cool guest that is all about games and uh, is going to be coming on in just a moment. So here's the format. We're going to hear an interview where a guest shares their dream and the steps that they've taken to reach their dream. We hope after hearing their story, you will think to yourself, if he or she can do that, so can I. The place where you are today to where you want to go tomorrow. Carolyn, let's meet our dreamer and doer, Kyle Allison. Tell us all about him. So Kyle Allison, growing up in a family of entrepreneurs, Kyle Allison learned at a young age the risk and rewards of small businesses. Kyle worked in his family businesses all through high school, where he learned a strong work ethic Thick, how to manage projects and to think on his feet. The Allison family owns Allison's Fun Incorporated, a corporate event company that produces events all across South Central U.S. The family's newest venture is Altitude 1291, and it's home to 27,000 square feet of indoor fun, including bowling, laser tag, arcade, VR, and a full-service restaurant. Kyle stays involved in the community as he has served on the Norman City Council. Visit Norman Board of Directors and Board of Norman Chamber of Commerce. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. 
Hey, good morning. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, excited to be here. Excited to be here. Kyle, um, this is a, a little bit of an unplanned question, but we were talking about games and gamification. Do you have any kind of like life hacks or ways that you maybe make your work a little bit more fun? You know, I, have to, I heard what Brent was talking about, assigning points. There are times that I have items on my to-do list that I'm like, hey, if you get this done, you know, you get you get to go home early or you get to do this. So, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely those items that get pushed down on your to-do list that I'm like, hey, maybe I can assign some extra gummy bears. So you said to those, um, I'd have to go gummy worms if I was going to get a whole bag mm -hmm. of candy, like you said. But, um, yeah, I definitely – um, just definitely sometimes have to look at those hard items and say, hey, what's the reward or what's the risk if I don't get this done? You know, that's the other way of looking at it as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, certainly, certainly. Thank you. Uh, thanks for, for humoring us with that. Well, Kyle, um, we want to welcome you to the Dreamers and Doers podcast. And we know that you're a dreamer, but you're also a doer. Kyle, which one comes more naturally to you? Um, you know, I had to think about that one a lot. And I'm sure you probably have everyone on board that um, on your podcast has different answers. And I love to be a doer. I think that um, that's part of the making the dreams happen is getting out and doing them. Um, you know, I can sit here and dream all day and sometimes that gets me in trouble by dreaming a lot <laughs> and thinking of more things to put on my to-do list. Um, but getting out and doing them, I think is what I um, kind of do best. And um, execution is, you know, part of making things happen. And I love, I love the doing part. I love getting out and doing things and not sitting in the office. Love that. You know, Kyle, I really thought your hack was going to be, if I just got these few things done, I would treat myself to several rounds of ski ball uh, or something <laughs> there at your, at your awesome facility. Well, okay. Take us back to your favorite time, I'm sure, in your life, middle school, and tell us all about uh, what your middle school years were like. And if there's maybe a particular story that stood out to you from, from those very special, special years. You know, I think as everyone talks about, I mean, middle school is tough years. It's uh, especially, you know, in our school system where you start in sixth grade and, um, you know, I still was, I still was a kid um, and I kind of had to grow up quick. And um, the good thing that I loved about middle school was getting that or getting to be a part of organizations and um, starting to have those extracurriculars that maybe you didn't have in, um, you know, elementary school. So um, I just always remember getting involved and first of all, meeting new friends, because you had three schools that combined into one. Um, so meeting new people and then um, creating that group of um, friends. And I remember I was involved with um, student council at the time. I think it was student congress, what we called it in middle school. Um, and I loved that because I found a group of people that I could relate to and hang out with and do great things and kind of find my way into the community and how I could be you know, become something important and become um, something who, someone who does important things for the community and helps out. I love that, Kyle. It, it makes a lot of sense <laughs> with what you do, with what you do now. Um, so I love hearing that that origin kind of started in, in middle school. Do you feel like that was instrumental in kind of getting involved later on? Was that always a part of your life or was that something that you discovered, you know, after you kind of got into job and th it, things like that? You know, I would say, first of all, it's not that I was not good at the academic part of school. I just didn't really enjoy it. I'll admit it right away. I didn't really enjoy it. I still did well. I still um, graduated with good grades, A's and B's. And um, But my, I loved being able to get involved with different clubs or organizations. And so I think I definitely did see that keep going in high school. And then even now, um, I find myself, I'd much rather go to a chamber networking event or a meeting with some friends than do my actual work. <laughs> so um, there's, I think that still followed my entire life. I'd much rather go um, network and hang out with community leaders than get my actual job done sometimes. Yeah, that be, <laughs> that's funny. Hey, it's the gamification, right? Like if you yeah. do this, then, <laughs> then we get to go hang out. Well, so I'm wondering a little bit about, um, I know, you know, you grew up in a family of entertainment. Um, did you always kind of dream of, you know, from a young age going into that business or were there other things kind of on the horizon then? Um, 
you know, I knew I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I think that growing up, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, you know, there's that cliche of if you grow up in the family business, you're going to keep going, doing the family business. And I, I uh, told myself I was going to make sure that I wasn't just doing it because that's what my family did. So I definitely did try different things. I worked in different industries. I went and in college, especially I worked for a very large company um, to kind of see what that was like and um, see if it was for me. It wasn't, I can tell you that. Um, I'm much like the family, smaller business atmosphere. But um, I did, I tried, I must force myself to try other things to make sure my true passion was back in entertainment and hospitality and um, working with my family. And that's where I ended up and that's what I love every day. That's cool. I love to hear just the the, the purposeful intention behind like kind of exploring other things and, and making sure, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what is, uh, what would you say is maybe one of the best parts or maybe an unexpected part uh, to being in the family entertainment business? You know, I would say the best part um, is that you just get to have fun. I mean, I think Brent kind of alluded to that earlier when, yeah, things aren't going, my way is not going the great in the day and I'm having a frustrating day. I can just go out, play some laser tag um, or go out, throw a couple balls in the bowling alley. Um, I don't do it that often, I'll admit. But what I do is I do just walk out. Um, when I am at our facilities, I can walk out and just walk through the facility and see kids having fun, adults having fun. Um, that's the best part of my job. Um, and so I would sit, I would work on the floor every day if I could. Um, that's not getting my actual job done sometimes, but if I could sit out and help the customers every day, um, I would do that. And um, it makes it easy to go to work on the weekends. And people are like, oh my gosh, you have to work weekends. First of all, I don't really know anything different because I always have worked weekends in our business. I grew up doing that, um, but it's easy when you're having fun. And so that's mm -hmm. kind of what I tell, you know, that is, it's, it's a lot easier to go to work when you're having fun. Yeah, I love that. And Kyle, you alluded, it, alluded to, uh, to it just a little bit about kind of being on the floor and you're very involved as, you know, a leader in your work, but also in your community. Can you tell us why it's so important for you to be involved? So I think there's a couple of different things. Um, some people look at ways to get connected in the community because they just feel like um, it's going to help them in their business or it's going to, you know, connect. And I think there are certain industries that that does. I mean, if you're selling insurance or you're selling a, you know, people product that you got to get out and network to build, you know, to build your network. Um, I personally like to do it because, you know, it's giving back. It's um, letting people, you know, younger generation know that they can do the same things that I did. I was in their footsteps not long ago. And um, I want to make sure that many people have the same opportunities that I had and um, know that you can do that. And, um, you know, I think giving back is really just something that shows that you have more time for the whole world, not just for yourself. And um, it's very rewarding. I think it's probably one of the most fun parts of my job. And so that's, um, that's the important part about it. One thing that I always say too, is people say, well, how do I get involved in the community or what do I do? And I said, well, find something that you like to do because the worst thing to do is to volunteer at something that's not fun. Um, I mean, I'll admit it. You're probably not gonna find me volunteering out building a house on Saturday for an organization because that's not really my fun type of thing to do. I don't like to work on my house. So the last thing I wanna do is go volunteer working on someone else's. Um, but you're gonna find me doing stuff that's, you know, engaging with, you know, the youth or helping out um, some people who are wanting to, you know, do a new business or um, spruce up their area. So that's kind of, I like to give back in areas that I enjoy. And that's kind of the way for me to get connected to that. I like the idea behind that because I feel like, well, it's sometimes, um, you know, I, I see uh, it's actually with one of our college groups and business groups where they are uh, part of their their curriculum is that they actually have a, a certain amount of volunteer hours that they need to donate. And I've definitely seen it both ways where some students kind of go towards like, oh, I'm going to choose the easy thing that I can kind of get my hours in and out. And it's just that like, you know, they, they punch in their hours and they don't really get 
get much out of it. But the ones that actually kind of do pour themselves into it actually seek something where it's like, oh, I can give back or this is something that feels meaningful to me. It just makes a huge difference into in, in actually being involved. So I love yeah, that. I remember, I remember the days in college that you had the, I kind of call it forced community service and I'm not a big believer in forced community service, mm-hmm. but people do believe that it, in, it opens the doors to opportunities you may not know about. Um, but it is, I remember those days in college and you have to, you do something purposeful or those, you know, 10 hours becomes 25 hours. It feels like. <laughs> Yeah, no, it does. It does. And I, I feel like it's even speaking to the students right now that are listening that are potentially maybe are looking for volunteer opportunities. So it's like, hey, guys, choose something that that's really meaningful, not just something that's going to look really good on a resume or something. Right. Like that. So, Kyle, what you're saying is if they're going to send you out to build a house, they better send you with a lot of gummy worms. That's uh, right. <laughs> and a straight edge and a couple rulers. And... <laughs> Well, let's talk about the kind of work that you do and think is fun, um, and that is your work being at Andy's Altitude and and the kind of work you do there. It's a fun environment. How do you keep it fun for your employees? What are, what is the what are the things you do to create a fun culture there? So, because obviously it's contagious. You know, when people come in and the employees are having a good time and and it's a a good culture uh, with your staff. How do you do that for your staff? Yeah, you know, it, it can be a challenge, I'll be the first to admit, because we have a very wide range of employees and skill sets and ages, ages especially. You know, we hire a lot of young adults, 16, 17 year olds, probably about 75 percent of our staff is going to be young adults. And so what they find is fun in the work environment is very different than, say, our servers and our kitchen staff who are going to be, you know, in their 20s, 30s, 40s. And so, um, you know, I think one of the so there's two different ways to please um, different groups in our in our company but um you know trying to keep a positive environment not letting other employees um bring others down um we try to eliminate negativity uh, uh, you know you can't eliminate all of it there's still going to be some in the workplace but you try to eliminate as much negative negativity because that seems to um bring down the morale and there is that um you know we try to provide uh, a workplace people want to come to so i um, not overworking our staff i'm not underworking them as well so you know if we have a um if we have some high schoolers that are coming up on um finals week giving them the flexibility to be able to have time off to do that um you know if you want to come and work for us for only three days a week we understand that you're a student you know you want to enjoy life you don't want to be working five days a week yet because trust me that comes down the road where you work seven days a week. Um, so there's, so we try to be flexible in our scheduling um, and try to respond to the needs. You know, if prom's coming up, ask for it off and we're gonna make sure you get prom off. Now, if you wait till the night before, you might have a challenge, but um, we try to be flexible and I think that creates the best morale. And um, as long as you don't take advantage of it, we try to work with you and your schedule and that keeps people happy and ready to work. I dig that. Students uh, note it uh, when you turn 16. It's a great place to work. <laughs> so, Kyle, uh, I know Altitude 1291 is a fairly new project. Uh, it is spectacular. It's so fun. Uh, but I wanted to, to, to note, is there a dream that you're working on right now? So... Um... We opened that concept right as the pandemic hit. So, um, you know, we're kind of, I'd say we're out of recovery mode and we're now kind of in that um, rebuilding and finding what is the norm. Um, you know, we've recovered, we survived, I guess you would say, the pandemic with that facility. And now it is what is the new norm? What is this facility going to do? What its potential is? Um, you know, we've still not had a normal year yet in that facility. Um, so once we kind of realize what the norm is, then we can see what our next step is. Because the, the facility, that concept was designed to be able to be built in other communities, um, in other areas, maybe even Oklahoma City Metro. Um, and so we are looking at what's that next step. Um, but we still have a little bit of time. I think that the, the COVID pandemic put us behind a little bit in that cycle. But we want to make sure, you know, our next step is the right step. So I would say our next, my next dream is to see where our next facility may be. And we already have some options on the table. It's just researching those and making the right decision of where's the next one. Very cool. Very cool. Well, that's exciting. Um, 
and it's probably related to this next question, Kyle. So we believe the difference between having a dream and actually doing your dream is related to the amount of effort you put into it. How does the effort play into your dreams that you have seen realized so far? You know, effort is huge. Um, getting out there and putting the work in, um, you can dream it on paper. I always tell people that on this latest project, I mean, we had a great idea. We had, it looked great on paper, but getting, um, you know, getting the financing, getting a bank to sign on it was, was very tough. I mean, it was one of my first projects to do alone and um, it was, it was tough to get someone and I probably knocked on 10, 20 different bank doors, talking with people, meetings, um, trying to get funding and the amount of effort I put into it every day when you walk out and you get told no, um, or you get that email that says, no, we're going to pass on this. Um, it was, it kind of knocked you down, but it just basically gave me the kind of um, push to go to that next step. Um, it would have been easy to give up. Um, and I always tell people, you'll never know when you're going to get that yes. And, you know, the bank that we worked with for this last project, um, if going into it, I never would have thought they would have been our partner for the future. And um, it just took that effort. I mean, I'll, the story is pretty, it's kind of funny. Um, if you live in Norman, you know where Crest is. And I was, um, I, one of my secrets, I don't tell everyone this, it's kind of dorky, but I love the Crest chicken strips. <laughs> So I was, um, hey, hey, nothing wrong with that. Nothing yes, wrong with that. I love some good gas station food slash grocery store food. So <laughs> I, uh, I was, uh, hungry. And so I left work by myself. Like, I just want to go grab some, something quick. So I ran into Crest. So I'm literally sitting in the Crest parking lot, eating my chicken strips in my car. And I look out like over the, the University of North Park area and I see all these banks. And I'm like, you know what? Today I'm going to go into all these banks and, you know, make my, find out how to make my pitch to. And so I looked across the area, saw one, walked in there, you know, first wiped the chicken and the grease off my hand, <laughs> had my pitch in the back of the car, walked in there, walked into a buddy's office and made the pitch. And I said, well, I kind of like this idea. Let me see what I can do with it. And um, the rest is history. And that bank became our partner on the project. So it's really just that effort and just sitting there and making sure that you're keep putting the effort out there and you eventually find someone who says yes. I love so the that magic combination of, of effort and crest chicken strips. That's yes. That's it. So that, now, and what's funny is every time I have a crest chicken strip, now I think of that, which is good. I mean, it's a good memory. <laughs> but, um, it is a, uh, and, and it's funny. It's just me because you know my wife won't go to crest eat chicken strips with me. It's during, so um, it's it's a good little um, it's a good history lesson each time I'm ready for a chicken strip and potato log. You gotta you gotta strike while the strip is hot. Yeah, and I I feel like. <laughs> We need to get this episode sponsored now by Crest. <laughs> I love that. It's a key, the key to uh, putting your dreams into action yeah. so in the chicken strip. <laughs> so Kyle, I feel like that that's actually really funny. So um, we this next question here has to do with kind of daily routines and and things that you do uh, to kind of keep yourself just well rounded. Um, is there anything that you do? Because I'm you even talked about, you know, sometimes you work maybe seven days a week, right? And so how do you, how do you kind of keep life still in motion um, and focusing on things that are also important outside of work? Right. Yeah. It's um, work-life balance is tough, but I've learned as I've, um, I'm still young, but as I've gotten older, I've figured out more how more important work-life balance is and how important, um, you know, family is. But the, it's tough to figure out that balance and especially in a, business like I'm in that is not the same schedule every week. We may have events, we may not have events, we may have night events, we may have daytime events. And so my schedule is very fluid. Um, but I always uh, try to be at home when I can for dinner. Um, that's important for me. A lot of times I'll get home, have dinner with the kids, go to bed, and then I may hop back into my home office. You know, it used to be I had to go to the office, but now we've all learned to work remotely. And so um, I may sit and work. I I'm a, kind of a night owl. So and people always joke that, well, we know Kyle's working. We get an email from him at, you know, 1230, 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, but that's kind of my time. And um, some people think that's like, you know, you're overworking if you're doing that. But you're also not going to find me sending an email at 8 a.m. in the morning, more than likely, because <laughs> um, I'm probably just getting to work at 830 or 9. Um, I'm not a morning person. So 
it um it is kind of it is for me is being flexible and that's also one of the great things about being in a family business and a small business is you know if i had a um a commitment with my family say after this meeting i would hop up and leave i don't have to go ask permission i'll have to submit pto i don't have to go through this big process and so that's the good flexibility of working um with your family is being able to do things with the family as well yeah so i could imagine in the kind of work that you do there are lots of fun opportunities can you think of your favorite thing i mean the favorite thing about being in the kind of business that you're in the business of entertainment and really the business of fun. What do you enjoy most about it? Uh, I would say visiting other facilities and seeing my colleagues. I've served on the board of, of the National Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions. And so I've been to amusement parks in Japan. I've been to, you know, Tokyo Disneyland. I've been to, um, you know, I've been to Spain. I've been to amusement parks in Spain. I've been to Mexico City to amusement parks. Um, Europe, I've really been all over the world visiting amusement parks and attractions similar to ours. And um, that's probably the best part is seeing the variety and the difference across the world of our, of our, of the business of fun. That's super cool. I, uh, I feel like I'm like, Oh my gosh, wonder what a uh, amusement parks in Japan and all around the world. That is, that sounds so cool. Um, so Kyle, I get to ask this, this next question on behalf of our middle school students. Um, and this is a kind of a time, a time uh, machine one here. And so it's a, if you could go back in time and maybe talk to your middle school self, what's a piece of advice that you would want to share? I would say my advice is don't focus on what others are thinking they're doing about you or anything else. Focus on yourself and how you can be the best that you can be. Um, pick something that you love and enjoy and start working on it then. It's never too early. I think you guys say it in kind of your motto, it's never too early to start a dream or to start doing um, what you want to do. And so um, I look back and I say, man, there's some opportunities I missed when I was maybe trying to focus on other things or thinking about what others thought about me or um, other things in the community. And so, um, you know, that self-awareness and getting out there and doing what you enjoy and what you think is right is really important. Okay, Kyle, we are at the end of this interview and we always end with the same question. And it's not even a question, it's, it's the same opportunity. So we're gonna give you 60 seconds to share your best advice with up and coming dreamers and doers, those middle school and high school kids that would be listening to this podcast. This is your chance to speak into them. We're gonna give you 60 seconds. So it's, don't take your time, but, but <laughs> you want to come right out with it and just share your best advice with these kids that are really trying to dream big and think big and do big. Um, so you ready for this? I think. Okay. Carolyn, uh, let's start the timer and let's, let's hear what Kyle has to say. All right. All right. I would, yeah, I would say work hard, play hard. Um, I've lived by that. And I think that everyone should, I shared it in my story earlier about how we finance this latest project. And, um, you know, when you get out there, you got to work hard, but then celebrate, um, play hard, um, look and see, you know, don't be working all the time. You can get caught up in working, but take some time to play, take some time to look back on what you're doing. Um, and but then jump back into working. And a lot of times play brings the stimulus that I need to know what is next and what I need to be doing next. It gives me time to relax and play and um, reflect. And so then I can jump back into what I'm doing and work hard and work hard, put those hours in, give it your best, go 100%, but then know that when it's time to play, it's time to play and have fun. So <laughs> that's my simple advice, work hard, play hard. I live by it, I think it works. Boom, awesome. Kyle, that was at 54 seconds, so. That was awesome. Great wow. dreamer and doer minute. <laughs> and I, I love that sentiment of working hard and playing hard and taking the time to play. And uh, I like that focus just because I feel like the older that we get, um, sometimes we lose touch of that that side mm -hmm. of the play aspect and that um, there are more opportunities to play um, than we think that there are if we can just change our mindset towards that. And so Kyle, thank you for, for sharing your story today and sharing your heart uh, with our students and with us. And I know that we're going to be better for it. I, uh, I'm just excited to 
to share this with our students and to have them think about, you know, living a, an intentional life, um, but also having fun uh, along with it. And so thank you, Kyle. Awesome. Thank you. So, Kyle, aside from just going down and visiting Andy's Altitude, what is the best way for students that might be listening to this podcast today to reach out to you or to follow what you're up to? Sure. You can always check out our website, altitude1291.com, um, or you can check out our company picnic business, allisonsfuninc.com. That's I-N-C, fun, I-N-C.com. Um, shows a little bit about what we do on that side of our business as well. Um, and you can always email me. It's either of those, Kyle at altitude1291.com or Kyle at allisonsfuninc.com, and I'll help you out however I can. Awesome. awesome. But thank, thank you, Kyle. Kyle, for making us better today and being never too young to dream. Thank you. That was an awesome conversation that we got to have with Kyle. Um, man, <laughs> maybe Brent, we need to get, I know we have a ball pit at Loveworks, but maybe now we need to get some more, maybe laser tag. That sounds like really fun. <laughs> we could have laser tag. That would be, this would be the best place to work ever, aside from, from altitude, of course. Yes. But uh, it would really be awesome. We could put laser tag in the ball pit. That would be even better. That is a, that's an idea. Let's pitch it next time. Um, <laughs> Well, if you enjoyed this episode, I have a recommendation for you. And it is episode number 24, and it's called Building Your Cardboard Dreams with Kane Monroy. And so Kane's story is a really unique one. Um, Kane, when he was actually nine years old, he actually started uh, building his own arcade using cardboard boxes and scrap materials from his dad's car shop. And so really fun back in 20. Uh, 12, there was a documentary made that was about Kane and his, uh, his uh, innovation. And so Kane today is still involved in a lot of cool, really tinkering, fun things um, from STEM related, uh, STEM related organizations and more. And so would recommend you checking out that episode, especially if you're into gamification. Sounds good. And just a reminder to visit loveworksleadership.org to learn more about us. Did you know we have a feature on our website that allows you to send us an audio question? Let us know if you need guidance on your leadership journey that you would like us or our guest to answer. And remember, real leaders, they don't blend in. They stand out. Dream big. And do your dream. Bye, everyone. Bye.